Welcome to part two of our filter presentation. Don't forget we're in chapter eight. These are the sections you should be reading in chapter eight. There are different filter responses uh, that it's difficult to go into in this uh, short time span. Uh, some of the major ones are Butterworth, Chevy Chev, uh, MFTD, which is maximally flat time delay. We're going to focus solely on Butterworth and look at low pass filters and high pass filters because of our time constraint, and they're the most used. And we're going to uh, work with low pass filters mainly. We're going to understand the terms, like what's the order of a frequency equals the number of poles, which can can be simplified to the number of capacitors uh, that we're using that have unique values. Um, and our textbook covers filters with uh, sections uh, with filters with uh, two through seven poles. And we'll talk about this as we go on. Negative 3 dB is a convenient reference for attenuation in the amplitude. And Butterworth filters have been around for a long time and designers have developed log charts to help in identifying the best approach. And I'll have more on this in a couple of slides. There's also uh, circuit designs that are functionally uh, will be initiated using the Butterworth response. And we can do some calculations as well. So this is a low-pass Butterworth filter, and here's some of the calculations we can use. Uh, this is for amplitude, and this one's for uh, result in decibels. I would uh, use this one compared to this one because it's less prone to error. So uh, formulas we'll, we'll use in some examples. Either one works and gives the same answer. So um, yeah, either one of these works, they'll give the same answer, and I recommend using this one. So here is a log chart. It's in your textbook. And um, we're going to use that to develop a proper filter. Uh, as long as we're given the adequate information, and, and the information we want is our specs, our specifications. I have that in a red box. And that's the kind of information you need if you're going to develop a filter, uh, Butterworth response filter active. So we're going to des design a low-pass filter with less than 3 dBs and uh, for uh, anything uh, less than 800 uh, Hz and 23 dBs for um, a frequency above 2 kilohertz. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take F divided by F sub C. And in our chart, it gives you this. For a low-pass filter, it's F divided by F sub C. High-pass filter, it's the opposite, F sub C over F. So if I take 2,000 divided by 800, I get 2.5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use 2.5 and find it down here. But the, the big thing is I want to make sure that I want to go below 23 dBs. Over here is the decibel levels. I want to go below 23 and right here is around 24 dBs, and I, I, so I meet that, and this tells me how many poles I will have. So three poles. So 2.5 minus 24 dBs, at least uh, meeting uh, greater than 23 dBs, I get three poles for that situation. So n equals the number of poles. Let's make sure we understand the calculation. So at 400 hertz, here, like at 400 hertz, what's our response? So if we divide 400 divided by 800, I get 0.5, and that's right here. And I'm going to take this to the 6 power because 2 times 3, 3 poles, 6 power. I want to, then I'm going to add the 1, and I get 1.015625. Then I'm going to take a log base 10 of that, and I get 0 0.006. 7, 3, and I'm going to multiply that times minus 10, and that's how I get my final value here of minus 0 0.067. So what we're doing here is that we're looking at different frequencies, and we're analyzing this filter, what the response is in dBs, and use this formula to do that. We'll talk in a moment about how to design these and how to build them. Given the specs, we design a Butterworth high-pass filter here. And here's our specs. The relative attenuations at 3 dB is our cutoff, 
is at a frequency greater than or equal to 500 hertz. And we're going to have a really strong heavy dB loss or attenuation at any frequency less than or equal to 125 hertz. So here's my high pass filter, what it looks like, and here's the 125 hertz I'm estimating where that's at. We should be down really low attenuation with an amplitude at greater than or equal to 56 dBs. At 3 dBs, we should be hitting it right here. And then from there on, everything should pass above that. So how many poles will it take to, to do this? So for a high pass filter, it's F sub C divided by F. F sub C is the 3 dB cutoff, so 500 divided by 125, and I, and I get 4. So I'm going to start here at 4, and I want to make sure I go down far enough uh, for our, our minus uh, greater than 46 dB. So here's around 45 dB, so anything below there is going to work. So this is the one we're going to hit. We're going to have 4 poles on this one. Therefore, the high-pass filter has four reactive elements. A low-pass filter is required for this given application. F sub C is um, 1 kilohertz, and then anything greater than or equal to 2 kilohertz, we want it to be attenuated greater than 20 dB. So again, we're going to look at our chart. We're going to divide F divided by F sub C. So it's 2,000 divided by 1,000, I get 2. And I want to look at that uh, anything below 20 dB here, which is here. So I'm going to go at 2, follow this path down below this 20 dB, and this is the next one I come to. So it takes 4 poles for this one. Now, using the Butterworth designs, they, they uh, already have uh, circuits built for us at a normal, normalized uh, uh, value, like these will have one, uh, the uh, resistors will have one ohms. However, the capacitors you look up in a chart. So the number of poles or active uh, devices, and we're going to use an op amp configuration. Um, all this is pre-developed, and uh, we just got to look it up. So we got to know how many poles we want. So this is shown for a two-pole. We have a two-pole because it's got two active components. And this is a three-pole with three active components. So here's the chart that we look these things up. It's got C1, C2, and C3. And if I go back over here, we have our, our drawing of C1, C, C2, and C3. So when determining the capacitance, we use the tables. We'll consult the tables to, to start our capacitive values. And the resistance will start at 1, then we're going to scale it. So for the high-pass filter, the capacitors are normalized to 1 uh, farad to start things off. So it's the opposite of the low-pass filters. So if we went to, um, to this one here, this is the low-pass filter design. The capacitor values are given to us. We'll start with the 1 ohm resistors. Now with capacitor, uh, the, the high-pass filter is just the opposite. We're going to start off with 1 farad capacitors, and we'll have to look up our resistor values in the chart. So this is a, um, we'll notice here we have a 2-pole two, two design, and here's a 3-pole design with the 3 capacitors. Here's our chart showing our resistor values, depending on how many poles you have. Now let's design the whole shebang. Let's design a, a low-pass Butterworth active filter with an S sub C at 800 hertz, less than or equal to 800 hertz, and we're going to have 3 dB attenuation there, and then we're going to have a 23 dB, greater than that even, or equal to, that attenuation at anything greater than 2 kilohertz. So what we're going to do is, is divide uh, F divided by F sub C. 2000 divided by 800, I get 2.5. I 
I want to make sure we go below 23 dB. There's 20 dBs. So we go 2.5, we go down here to this value, so it's going to be a three pole device. Let's get the, um, the let's, let's develop the constant for scaling. So here's how we're going to do that. These filters will incorporate feedback to limit gain and have a normalized 3 dB cutoff. And we're going to use the baseline as one rating per second. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take that F sub C um, and we're going to plug it in to 2 pi F. And it's going to be 800 hertz there. And, and that's our baseline, one radian per second. This is our angular uh, velocity. And we get 5K with that. So for the low pass filter, um, the uh, R equals 1 and C equals the value from the table to start. And we have our, our scalar value. So we're going to start off. We have the scale factor. Now incorporate the capacitor values from the table. And so here's, here's, the, uh, here's what we started with. We have 1 ohms here, and we just put C. We got these from the table value, and we, we plug the values in. 3.546, 0.2024, and 1.392. And these are values that would be very difficult to, to find, and they'd be very big as well. So uh, th that's our starting point. Now to get closer to the real values, we're going to divide the capacitor values from the, the scaling factor of 5K that we derived. So we're going to start with that. So we divide the 5K divided by those capacitor values, and now we end up with something that seems reasonable. 705 microfarad, at least we're in the microfarad range. So all these values now, we, we incorporate that. Since the capacitors are hard to find, we want to choose a value that's, that's easier to find, to start off with. So we're going to choose, we're going to start with C1, and we're going to choose 0.047 microfarad. This is where experience comes into play. Now we're going to divide the current value by, of, of C1 by the chosen value and arrive at 15K. So we took those values, divided by uh, the scaling value, we got this, and then we chose that value and divided by the value we want to use, just C1 we started with, and we got 15K. So now we're going to use that as a scaling factor for the other capacitors. So we'll take the next value that we had for capacitor 2, divided by 15K, and the value from C3, divide that by 15K, and we got new values for our capacitors. So remember, the capacitors and resistors are inversely proportional, so uh, we must now multiply 15K times the normalized value of the resistors, and voila, we have a circuit to start testing. So here's our circuit now we're going to start testing. And this had 3 times uh, 1, if you remember the original one, so that's going to be 3 times 15K is 45K, the rest are 15K, and then we have all our unique values for capacitors. So here's some guidelines for capacitors for uh, filter design. Uh, we don't use electrolytes or other polarized capacitors for filter design. These are the type that we use. And uh, also uh, high quality mica and mylar capacitors are also used, but polystyrene uh, capacitors are recommended. All right, so here's your homework. Chapter 8, do these problems. And also build that low pass filter that I just showed you in slide 21 and uh, set it up as I'm laying out here. That's all for today. Thank you.